Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. There would be an unprecedented resignation when, through a flood of tears, King Charles III stated, my sister, princess and, fell over in the palace. The announcement came in a solemn press conference, making headlines when it sent tremors through both the British monarchy and far beyond, one of many historic, and saddest, moments in royal annals. Treasuring what no one had believed King Charles would begin to realize his sister was stepping down from public life and choking up with unimaginable grief the tears shed. Princess and Trail blazed as probably the hardest member of the family. Sticking to royal protocol, she's rarely one to shy away from her responsibilities and has since attended thousands of events, launched countless charities. For many, she is the epitome of British royal duty and stiff upper lip, getting on and not moaning is solidly putting in the hours for an incredible 67 years. So her abrupt resignation, announced early Monday in a clear attempt to control the news cycle for the week after an obvious catastrophe occurred this past Saturday afternoon and meant ending up worse than any pessimist predicted, is stunning, terrible. King Charles, speaking in a somber national address, made little pretense of the monumental weight of the circumstances. You are the very definition of resilient and strong. Aladdin continued, his voice breaking at the end of each sentence like if he did not know how to even form the words, she needs this, it sucks, but she really does. Exactly what happened has been cloaked in secrecy, with the royal family requesting the respect and understanding we and our families need at this very difficult time. What is certain, however, are the severity of Anne's injury and her impending break from royal functions. No details have ever been released about the crash in which Princess and was injured and this has only heightened public concern slash conjecture. Not much has been revealed, but what was said sounded serious rather than yet another minor blunder, there is a little more at stake than anticipated preventing and from carrying out her packed list of royal duties. The Queen is deeply distressed by the loss of eight young lives and so, instead, doffing masks with figures that we are used to seeing suffer in silence and yes they seem upset. Not that I will ever wonder why the family kept quiet about Anne's accident. The true-to-life Princess Anne, the unsought-after unsung hero of Britain who spent a lifetime as a grinder and bang out of reading anything about her in fan mags or on the TV guide. She has never been one to shine from the front, but rather lead by example, taking on her duties with a quiet fierceness that has garnered her respect and admiration from countless far and wide. Her need for that privacy has now stretched to what she goes through when there are no cameras around, as she navigates an intimate struggle outside of the public light. The departure of, princess and from royal duties. Her unwavering loyalty to the monarch, alongside other qualities of service, has made her a key member of the royal family. Her dedication, commitment and work ethic, from her teenage years as a princess until now, unprecedented for any senior royal. She has begged more than most with even the slightest amount of recognition to take on extra roles and engagements, not under the spotlight. Her bubbly personality will be sorely missed by the numerous charities and organizations who have experienced her inimitable charm over so many years. A life that has affected millions through these works for Save the Children as well as countless royal engagements, and indeed many sports and educational initiatives too. Her common touch has won her admiration further afield. The titles were never Anne's point, throughout her reign, she has had an altogether less ceremonial role than as mere figurehead of the realm. She has no doubt done as much good by her country and its people to do most who have held the highest job in the land. She will be sorely missed and no one can replace the hole she leaves in our hearts. That is a sort of stark reminder of the sacrifices so many members of the royal family have had to make to look after their country. For all King Charles was telling us officially what had happened, this really was an older brother pouring his heart out to a younger one. The little brothers managing to stick together in solidarity and respond only that way brothers can when they lose one of their own. While he soldiered through the press conference, it was obvious that this situation is wrecking all of them, Harry, Kate, Meghan and William, every member of his family. In his tribute to Anne, 
Charles emphasized the sincerity of such devotion and for her entire lifetime of service. In a trembling voice, Charles referred to and as a rock over the years and stated, this decision, though heartbreaking, is what is best for her as a person at this time. As he wrote, they were words of a person who did not take in stepping back lightly, but as one she made in service to her healing and well-being. Charles's reaction has struck a chord in numerous people because it provided an emotional glacé beneath the layers of duty and decorum that end the royal family from public consideration. Knowing what and meant to Charles, having her in his life for over twenty years at that point, it nearly brought me to tears talking about it. The reaction is rare to see in a member of the monarchy, and speaks to the weight of the issue. More than an ode to reality, it was Charles saying love yous if you want to, but above all, in times like this as we are the brother and sister of Britney Spears please let us be. Among other messages on social media princess and has received a flood of public support. A great wave of love and appreciation for and, as well as sadness, affection that so many have for her. It also happens that she is one of the most down-to-earth working royals out there and has a reputation for being practical and always putting duty first. It has been heartwarming to read all the encouraging and warm messages for and wishing her strength and recovery because she earned it through years of doing. It is a moment of deep sorrow not only within the royal family itself but also across the realm, which has long looked to and as an icon of fortitude and purpose. Be it as may this was a radical shift in the royal landscape and she will be very much missed. In my mind, it only speaks to how far-reaching and is in the cultural consciousness. She made a difference in the lives of millions of people, even if not through headline-grabbing salt-of-the-earth acts but instead with her slow and quiet service. Her legacy can be seen in the multitude of charities she supported, the people she met and the places she helped. No wonder, then, that so many have reacted with such emotion to her resignation. But in tragic news for the royal family, they've been left reeling as they attempt to find a replacement for Princess Anne. It will also heap more pressure on other senior royals, such as king-in-waiting Charles and his son Prince William and wife Princess Kate, to take on the extra work. It is a daunting challenge with so much of the work and had managed to do in love and dedication. Of any of them it will be the fact that Sister and Rock Caroline is not there for much-needed advice, some consistency and more than anything a sense between Charles in particular that they had joint duties to support their damaged family. In addition, it means the royal family will now have to deal with her privately, and potentially publicly, no longer by their side. It's really just a loss within loss. But what I believe and has actually gifted the royal household at a time similar to this is her strength. They have been tried before, and they shall undoubtedly be tried again. This week has been the appropriate reminder of the fact that what and leaves behind is hard graft and dedication, things at the very core of the monarchy. Personally, as I ruminate over Anne's exit, the more sad it makes me and only underscores the extraordinary pressures of royal life. But the news that and is stepping back is also a jarring reminder about how even the toughest among us will eventually be worn down. It is a humbling truth that humanizes the same figures we put on pedestals and crown. And will go down as a footnote in history, a teen player who did her job and never asked for recognition. The example she showed will be a hard one to top, but you can be sure that the royal family will always look to use as an example of inspiration going forward into this new chapter. It will take up residence not just in the heart of the monarchy, but with those everyday folk who have such a huge place in their hearts for her. Of end and the life she's lived, I only have respect. She has performed her duties with, classically, cool aloofness, never stepping in the spotlight or seeking unwarranted recognition. As with all great leaders, her impact will be felt long after those unfair and unnecessary demands that took their toll. Her grace too shall continue a time beyond leaving behind an example of what it means to serve with humility. Princess Anne's sudden decision to turn away from royal life following a devastating accident not only ripped her family apart, but tore the monarchy for generations. It is a seismic change in the British monarchy. The fact that Anne is not there must make all of us ponder through which life seems like driving closed doors and, therefore, enables a franker conversation about royal life 
those encounters behind palace gates rarely fill in the gaps. The shockwaves of Anne's departure have the potential to reverberate across the uncharted waters that King Charles, Prince William and his fellow royals now find themselves venturing. The resignation of princess and exposes a well-worn truth, more taxing than any job is one in the royal household. Regarded as the monarchy's Iron Lady, and has carried out more engagements each year than almost any other member of her family. However, this endless commitment not always is free of charge. What would deplete 30-plus years of and prioritizing duty over self, driving herself to keep a merciless keeping up with the Joneses' pace? Anne's accident, tragic though it was, stands as a grisly example of the human cost demanded by lives lived in the public glare. The grind of playing at the highest level in a sport like this is such that even the most talented and physically skillful players can get worn down. And not only retires through injury. It is a product of an entire life focused on the queen this a moment for our culture to adjust the way we tell, that is, romanticize a story of royal duty and consider the sort of price life exacts from those whose heritage it really belongs. Princess Anne's leaving the building changes not only how the firm appears to the public but also what goes on behind closed palace doors. She was the response to my mom, or should I say she had the option to arrange everything in the family, cut through any talk and wasn't anybody's inhabitant hoodlum. Anne, who was one of King Charles's closest confidants answering the prince in fast lightning candidness as she has answered him her whole life undoubtedly is a missing link in her brother and well long before the Natne family supports. It struck me that King Charles would be more alone, without and to center and ground him as he attempts to find his way in a higher profile reign than before, even pre, family pressures. This could lead to decision-making taking a back seat in family, now that they don't have Anne's perspective strong, practical and always unbiased. The pond of full of royal family relationships, alliances and sometimes conflicts. It's an often precarious equilibrium that the family strives to maintain and in missing, could set things off kilter behind the scenes. In addition, Anne's retirement would mean incoming pressure on other senior royals that would fill still busy schedules. Some of Anne's duties will have to be carried out by other senior royals, but they are likely to now adjust their schedules as she was one of the busiest working members of the family. And, with decades of experience under her belt, extensive personal relationships around the globe and an unparalleled work ethic, is irreplaceable. The rest of the royals must pick up the slack, but no one can quite match Anne's perfect mix of dedication and expertise and clout. Her resignation may turn out to be a moment where public attitude toward the monarchy changes. For many, she came to represent the supreme value of the royal family's unswerving, blue-collar work ethic and no-nonsense commitment to service that stood as a stark contrast to other family members' soap operas and missteps. The story could then turn to the legacy she leaves, in both her impact on UK life and how the royal family moves forward without her. Their test is to keep the public engagement at the level that and provided every time. The absence of such a prominent royal would leave a gaping hole in the monarchy's approach to public engagements and its wider charitable commitments. That said, it will be a question for the rest of the members of the current family that whether they can match that visibility and connection with the public or Anne's absence creates some sort of vacuum which naturally affects overall standing. It also affords the royal family a moment to consider how they will inhabit their positions as heads of the British monarchy. The departure of and reminds us that a more sustainable way forward would be to recognize the volume of public work large senior royals do as well as making some accommodations for their health and welfare. The firm may have to adopt a more blended approach, except that even those once described as the hardest working members of the royal family are mere mortals. It also throws a spotlight on succession planning within the royal household, with only six or so frontline members of the family and was never first in line to the throne but as a senior royal played an invaluable role in supporting the monarchy's day-to-day -day operations. With Queen Elizabeth absent, the burden shifts to a new generation of royals such as Prince William and Princess Catherine, who must step up along with their contemporaries as King Charles looms in the background. Even if William and Catherine have proven themselves to be capable and dedicated royals many times over, 
and stepping back is a stark warning that depending on the same handful of staffers isn't sustainable. A more general, and hence more flexible, strategy is needed by the monarchy, one that becomes a supporting platform undistinguishable to chameleonic swingsuit on which by mistake and resigned. Finally, this incident is a sad but good reminder that the royal household cannot afford to disregard the future, both immediate and long-term. Despite the fact that and is happily stepping back, it will be important to put together a plan of action that allows the next generation of royals, not just William and Catherine but many secondary royals who will undoubtedly be called upon to shoulder this burden in the years to come, to continue serving the royal household in a unified whole. I have always considered princess and to be the last straightforward royal. Everyone else has a veneer to keep under control, everyone constantly wants to gratify or annoy, there are no daily strife with the royal who has spent her life in service without ever needing the adulation she very obviously despised in the first place. Losing in means losing a linchpin, a kind of touchstone to calm us down when things get rough. This demonstrates the rest of us that even the most resolute people have their limitations and makes us question the duties we place upon those whom we designate to serve us. And was one of my favorite royals in the whole family. She put her shoulder in every of her work, and she had to give in that she understood that life is hard, and she knew how to get through those difficult times. She did not ask for praise, and she asked for admiration, she maintained the struggles one by one every single day. Her leaving will be harder for the royal family and the thousands of institutions and occasions she tend, many people called Anne an inspiration, and few of them lie. I believe Anne's departure is a reminder for us all. It reminds us that the royal family, first and foremost, is a family, and it has a right to be treated as gently and fairly as any other. They are, after all, human beings, entitled to the same care and compassion that they so willingly offer to others. Going into the future, I pray that this becomes a wake-up call for the royal family to rethink how they support their members better, even if this means publicly declaring reduced public duties, for both their own well-being and general health. A towering legacy of service, dignity, and resilience for princess and but it likewise acts as a poignant reminder of what it is to be this devoted. And frankly, it is entirely understandable why people missed and loved princess and so much. In the very best way, she was the royal workhorse, no one glamorous but for decades and has been backbone of monarchy, doing hard work other more profile relatives sometimes sidestepped. Princess and exiting the stage, princess and represents a key behind-the-scenes player in all the day-to-day -day mechanics of monarchy. While the heads of state, those that one sees in the tabloids daily, for better or worse, and played her part in those less sexy but crucial engagements which keep our monarchy relevant to ordinary people. Sure, who will replace and is a more behind-the-scenes matter that the royal family will have to grapple with next. This is not simply a matter of slotting her into the diary, it is an acknowledgement that her absence could unbalance the fragile machinery that keeps the monarchy running smoothly. The glue and provided, links with so many organizations, friendships and helping her philosophically inclined brother King Charles II, is not exited by pomp and circumstance alone. Additionally, Anne's departure underscores the unheralded load that support royals those who fall outside the direct line of succession yet perform a variety of key functions carry. Anne, Prince Edward and others often tackle unglamorous but crucial behind-the-scenes engagements which are as important to the image of the monarchy as high-profile events such as meeting world leaders. These roles are frequently less glamorous and have punishing hours coupled with relentless travel. Anne's abrupt exit emphasizes that these unsung tasks are vital, if you have been neglecting them, shame on you, and the heavy price they deliver to those who carry these burdens. An important question it throws up is just how sustainable these roles are? For how much longer can the royal family really ask its members to keep up these punishing levels of work, and how much will be asked of them personally? Anne's accident could be a wake-up call to the reality that the model of royal duty as currently practiced is simply not sustainable, and certainly not for those without the good fortune of a direct line to the throne delivering them regular bursts of high-visibility exposure. Anne's departure also signals a broader changing of the guard among the ranks of the royal family. 
As one of the older working royals, her stepping back highlights the struggles involved in updating royal roles to be something younger royals can realistically perform and which those watching will tolerate. All the younger royals, not least William and Catherine, already have sought to concentrate on more contemporary causes like mental health, early childhood development and environmental sustainability. There is one way in which in going is unique. In terms of what that means for the monarchy, can they keep up this huge amount of work they are putting through the traditional way that an organized things, or do they have to go down a more modern, slightly easier lifestyle being able to manage so many different roles? It is not simply a handing over of the ceremonial baton, it involves the reconfiguring of the monarchy within modernity. Should the royal family hold firm to centuries-old duties, or should it modernize to mirror the interests of a changing culture? Anne's departure could be the catalyst to a real redefinition of modern royal expectations and our traditional values. As well as its immediate impact on the royal family, Anne's farewell will have repercussions for all the charities and organizations she has worked so hard to support. But it was never a mere ceremonial role for Anne. A true hands-on activist taking action on the issues that would eventually find complainants in her courtroom. Her presence was essential and whether it involved events, stakeholders, or the royal stamp of approval made no difference. Charities that had her as a benefactor for decades are now in unknown waters, without her hand to hold. For someone who was, by all accounts in admiration of her mother-in-law, a passionate advocate, the emotional and practical effect of replacing her with another royal is incalculable. For many of these entities, royal patronage isn't just the ultimate badge of honor, it's also a key ingredient in delivering their charitable work, fundraising and public outreach. Without end to navigate it, this is a different landscape, one where the royal support that mattered in a previous era as might not possess the same personal involvement or sway. Despite outward appearances, King Charles seems to be personally reeling in response to and resigning. And wasn't just a sister, she was his go-to person in many of the darkest periods he went through. One of his staunchest defenders when he ascends the throne has departed, turning an already difficult job for Charles into an even more complicated one. Now more than ever, the loss of and at his side makes Charles potentially vulnerable to those likely internal and external forces. Gone will be the inextricable solace of a brother who actually gets the truly different weights of duty that come with royal life. The loss might well affect Charles's judgment and cause him to rely more on other advisors or even increase a sense of loneliness at the top. The Queen's loss, her absence might seem just a logistics challenge, but it is also a personal tragedy of the first order for the King and it will have an impact, even if only behind closed doors and out of public view. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, Please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.